And this is just a quick overview of the NFT ecosystem, what NFT ecosystem looks like on, on the Oasis network, where we cover quite big range of uh, art collections. We have 2D, 3D pixel arts. We have domain name services. We have multiple NFT marketplaces and uh, different games, uh, more NFT-oriented games uh, currently on the, on the network. Next one. Yeah, this is just a quick kind of like fun snapshot of some of the notable collections on the, on the network. On the left, you have this, uh, uh, it's called Army of Minions. It's actually created by one of the most uh, uh, really interesting uh, mathematicians, and uh, he's very into art himself, and he created all these uh, collections using math, math equations, and uh, this is actually the very first confidential NFT collection on the Oasis network, and the, 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 conf the confidentiality is manifested via only the NFT owner has the access of the private data, which is the mathematical equation, and uh, only the NFT owner will, be ha will have access to that, and they can use that math function to generate, regenerate the R themselves. And uh, our engineer Nikhil will demo how that works uh, shortly after this. And on the on, on the right, you have the what we just uh, recently launched on the network, which is the the NFT R Week, uh, which uh, uh, is actually pretty exciting. Uh, next one, yeah. So we talk about DeFi, NFT, uh, gaming. What's next for Web3? Uh, we believe is uh, decentralized society, which basically reward trust and the cooperation and the break data silos and allow data sharing in the privacy preserving way. And here is a quick, just a quick, not necessarily exhaustive, but just a quick example of uh, some of the primitives to enable Web3, which you will need decentralized identity, you will need private DeFi, that to bring DeFi to the mainstream. Um, to you know, solve some real financial issues people are facing, such as student loan issues, mortgage issues, and such. And uh, you need to bring new assets to, the, to Web3. So currently, Web3 is primarily dominated by financial assets, but that's not enough. Uh, you would need data assets, a confidential NFT, and all the other uh, type of assets uh, to further propel Web3 forward. And uh, last but not least, uh, Data DAO, which we'll elaborate uh, shortly after this, uh, basically provides governance and incentive mechanism to uh, uh, incentivize um, data owners and uh, honor individual data rights. Cool, next one. So let's talk about, we won't, we won't be able to elaborate all of these primitives, um, but we just want to elaborate two, uh, which are private uh, DeFi, confidential DeFi, and the NFT slash Data DAO. So let's talk about Data uh, sorry, let's talk about the private DeFi first. So, uh, sorry, previous slide. So what's wrong with, yeah, so what the, the first generation DeFi, which is what we currently have, um, there's some issues with it. First is it built primarily for crypto enthusiasts and uh, unfortunately folks on yield farming primarily and uh, comp you know, the track record, the transaction, everything is public. And that is quite prohibitive to bring mainstream to the DeFi world. And uh, we believe the next generation, next slide please, uh, of DeFi uh, honors confidentiality where information gets to be kept uh, private and where institution investor, institutional investors get to participate. Uh, and uh, the DeFi is reputation and credit based so it can solve some real financial issues. Uh, we talk about like student loan, mortgage, uh, to bring the unbanked uh, market to Web3. And, um, Right, and then for uh, sophisticated institutional traders, uh, some of the issues you currently have uh, in the, uh, it's primarily in the Ethereum uh, ecosystem is the uh, uh, MEV issues, uh, where you have mempool completely kept public, and that sometimes is not necessarily good for the traders because you have this uh, back running, front running issues, and where with, when in private DeFi you have those issues largely resolved. Cool, next one. Um, so yes, yeah, so always is the best position to uh, bring to unlock the full value of DeFi and uh, bring the next generation of DeFi to Web3, uh, where beca because of the high scalability of Oasis Network, as well as the privacy first uh, features, where the, we have the privacy first technology to enable the reputation and the credit based uh, private DeFi. Cool, next one. So last but not least, we want to quickly elaborate on um, data NFT and data DAO. So what, do we, what, what is data NFT? Data NFT is essentially a data back tokens where you, rep you can represent documentations, you can represent images, movies, royalties, all kinds of data, uh, users' data. Um, but essentially, these data tokens enable computation or consumption on data of the user data to be done in a way that honors um, how the owners of data, such as myself or yourself, how you want your data to be computed. 
and uh, the computation will be done in a data responsible way using the responsive technologies such as could be secure enclave, uh, TEE, uh, um, differential privacy, uh, federal machine learning. You know those uh, those uh, typical responsible data technologies, and. Uh, the most importantly, the tokens need to be compatible across ecosystems. So data tokens need to be, need to have this interoperability and can be transferred across different uh, blockchain networks. Cool, uh, next one. So data DAO is essentially built on data NFT, um, but it has this governance and incentive model to allow data owners, the owner's data, to allow them to be part of the value chain. Because right now in the Web2 world, data owners, such as your data, my data, were completely being cut off the, the value chain. Um, it's primarily uh, uh, only the corporates who hold the data and the data buyers. That's where the transaction is happening, where data owners don't really get to be part of that, that, that transaction at all. In the Web3, we believe you own your data, your data is your, is your property, and uh, when your data is being used, in some uh, real world use cases, you should be rewarded for sharing that data. And that we believe can uh, break data silos and uh, build this uh, uh, Web3 um, that we believe that is uh, truly decentralized and honor individual data rights. Cool, um, next one. Yeah, so um, last but not least, one quick highlight, uh, quickly highlight uh, a partnership uh, that is one of the most important partnerships happening on the OS ecosystem between Genetica, which is one of the biggest uh, genome companies in, in the APAC region, and Oasis. Uh, last, um, last month, we actually uh, held this uh, inclusive ceremony between Genetica, and that ceremony was actually witnessed by the Viennese Prime Minister and uh, um, some other uh, government officials, some other ministers, and to uh, the government, lo the local Vietnamese government is actually fully supportive and want to endorse um, this initiative. And what is that initiative? Is actually to bring pre precision medicine to Web3. And how Genetica is doing that is by allowing, empowering uh, users of Genetica, like the, the genome data, the owner of gene gen gen genome data, to allow them to participate in medical research could be drug discovery, could be a healthcare, healthcare uh, outcome research uh, to allow them to share the data while, while the, the buyers are uh, honoring the, the users um, how they want their data to be, to be consumed. Uh, and uh, yeah, and this is a quick snapshot of how Genetica has been growing over the past uh, couple years and they're very much on track to bring 100,000 genetic profiles to the Genetica Data DAO, uh, to G sorry, Genetica Data DAO, and the, which will be built on the OS network. So bring that uh, 100,000 genetic profile to OS network as well. So uh, yeah, so uh, last but not least, I want to quickly share a very exciting news. We recently concluded the uh, OASIS uh, uh, Bloom Hackathon, and uh, we have more than 1,000 high quality submissions. I will not go into details about who the winners, you know who you are, um, and uh, we are actually about to launch uh, uh, quite a few hackathons. Uh, there are quite a few hackathons lined up, and uh, which will be, so this hackathon was uh, featuring uh, DeFi and the gaming. Uh, the upcoming hackathon will be featuring um, Web3, Data DAO, uh, and uh, Decentralized Society. So it could be very interesting. Uh, Cool, yeah, so we believe Oasis uh, is building, because of the privacy uh, first feature and highly scalable, highly secure, we're best positioned to propel Web3 forward. Uh, we have the uh, over uh, $235 million Oasis ecosystem fund to support Web3 builders. So folks out there, let's build. Thanks very much. And next, we'll start with a demo of the confidential NFT on the OASIS network. I think I have my mic. Uh, thanks, Linda. And yeah, excited to show everybody what confidential NFTs um, look like on the OASIS network. Um, so we're going to go ahead and show a video of what that looks like. Um, so hopefully that'll load. There we go. Um, so this is Metamir, and we're going to take a look at an army of minions, which is uh, the first confidential NFT collection on Oasis that Linda mentioned earlier. Um, so you can see here in the gallery, you can see a bunch of low-res versions of all of the collection items. Do you know what the washroom is? And we're going to look at um, minion number 18, um, which is one that... Um, they were going on about some 
technical demonstration of privacy preserving <laughs> NFTs. I was like, I'm gonna go pee and come. <laughs> this is so weird. Yeah. They just made us sit down Woo! and they're presenting and then they're like, okay, now talk. Don't be fair, you're good, you're good. Cool, you're cool, cool. Uh, so yeah, so like when we're um, looking at this NFT, we can download some unlockable content which is only available if you own the NFT. Um, so you see here that there's like a three-step process that's involved. Um, the first step is um, the NFT is currently an ERC721 token on um, Emerald, our EVM-compatible um, paradigm. And so we're going to actually lock that token um, within a smart contract called the Parcel Bridge Adapter. Um, what that's going to do is essentially prove to Parcel that we own that token. And then we do this login with Parcel step which essentially signs a transaction that says uh, we are the same wallet that locked that NFT, um, and Parcel will let you now uh, download the confidential content. Then to unlock that NFT, you remove it from the bridge adapter, which will then um, unlock it on the Emerald side and let you do uh, the same trading, listing it on uh, NFT marketplace, et cetera, um, and no longer have give Parcel access. Um, so once that transaction goes through, uh, we can actually take a look at what's inside uh, this um, NFT. Um, so as Linda mentioned, these NFTs are generated by uh, confidential um, math functions that you can only access if you own that NFT. Um, so opening that up, um, we get this zip file that has uh, two things. It has, firstly, that mathematical function, uh, this really cool uh, thing. And then secondly, it has uh, the high-res version of that image. Um, yeah, much, much better looking than uh, that preview. Um, so yeah, now to prove that we can't really download it anymore, we're going to send it to a different address. Um, and while that transaction is going through, um, I guess we, we can do so much more with this. Uh, this NFT application is actually one of the simplest applications that you can do with Parcel where, um, and um, NFTs on um, Emerald, where all you're doing is um, allowing download access. But Parcel actually has a full uh, permissioning and compute layer, uh, which let you do things such as set access policies for whoever is holding the NFT. So you can set access policies such as time-based access for like allowing data rentals. Um, so once the timer runs out, you no longer have um, access to um, do whatever. And then you can even allow access to just specific compute jobs within our compute layer, um, which effectively just don't let you download the NFT at all, but you might um, enable some compute. For example, um, if you have like a private seed that's an NFT, you can use that to uh, generate some additional artwork uh, NFTs by running a private machine learning model or something like that. Um, so yeah, the possibilities we feel are really um, quite endless with this. And if you have any creative spark, uh, please do find me and we'll get you started with uh, building. Um, yeah, thank you. And without further ado, uh, we'll move to the panel. <laughs>